Dr. Thomason, roll call. President Reese, members of the board, please let the record show that all five board members are present and accounted for tonight. Thank you. We're going to go ahead and have our moment of silence, followed by our Pledge of Allegiance. And I just ask that you keep everyone who lost their lives 18 years ago in our 9-11 tragedy um, in your thoughts and prayers. We'll go on to the approval of the agenda. I move that we approve the agenda as it's presented. Second. Any questions or comments regarding the agenda? All those in favor? Aye. 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 That motion carries 5-0. Dr. Thomason, superintendent's report. Yes, President Reese, it looks like uh, we're almost to fall break, so on Friday, September 13th, we do have a superintendent's visit to Gateway Point Elementary School, and that's from 9 to 11. I hope all the board members can make that. And then Wednesday, September 25th, we do have a governing board meeting and work study at 5.30 p.m. here in the governing uh, board room. And then shortly after that, September 30th to October 11th, we have our fall break, so there'll be no school and no meetings during that time. It's hard to believe that the school year is already almost a quarter way done. Thank you. All right, we will move on to board comments. Mrs. Reese. Mrs. Wilson. Uh, we, Mrs. Kaler and I got to attend the law conference this week and it was awesome to see all uh, the new laws and all the different changes that have come out. And a couple things that really struck home for me were the inclusion of um, the relationships from teachers to kids and how important that is with our suicide rate, even starting in kindergarten, they were talking about. So, and how important that is to keep those kids connected with a teacher and it'll make a difference in their lives. So um, I would like to know if we have any PDs coming from our staff on social training and how that might work out. President Reese, members of the board, we are going through training for our entire staff. We do have some trainer of trainers um, going through training it now with the state of Arizona. And then in January, we'll be training all certified staff in the district. Thank you. Any other board comments? I want to say we had the opportunity to attend Higley's first football game and got to celebrate their new turf field. It's awesome, um, so that's exciting. And um, we're just off to a very busy start of the year, which I say the start of the year, but we're almost a quarter of the way through. So um, any other board comments? Okay, we'll move on. Request to speak to the governing board. Mrs. Reach, do we have any requests? All right, we'll move on. Then we will go on to the consent agenda. Um, I move that we approve the consent agenda as it's presented to us. Second. Any questions or comments regarding the consent agenda? President Reese. Dr. Thomason. After our meeting earlier this week, we did reach back out to the Higley High School um, cheer team, and there's some changes on the student um, chaperone ratio, so it'll now be one to six instead of one to three. And they'll also be coming back early on Monday from their uh, event in California. Perfect, thank you. Any other questions or comments on the consent agenda? 
All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 And that motion carries 5-0. Um, we'll go on to our action and information items. 8.1 is the monthly governing report for fiscal year 19 and fiscal year 20, the reports for August 2019. Any questions? I know Mr. Holland is not here this evening. President Reese, members of the board, Mr. Holland has been here all week, but um, because he has just came back, I did send him home early today, so he would not have to stay here for the full night. No, very much appreciated. If anyone does have any questions regarding the monthly governing board report, we can email Mr. Holland or Dr. Thomason, um, and that monthly governing report is available online as well for our public to uh, review the financial report we get. We will go on to 8.2, and... I move that we approve to ratify the 2019-2020 um, memorandum of understanding between the Higley Unified School District and the Higley Education Association. Second. Questions or comments? Mr. Glover. <laughs> How did you know? <clears throat> Thank you, Madam President. Just uh, for Ms. 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 Martins, um, I see that there's um, the six diverse members of uh, on the Higley, well it says from HEA, that's on meet and confer, but none of them are classified and I know we're looking to get more classified representation. Would it be, do you find, think it would be helpful if we had a classified member on there uh, and expanded sort of the, what, the, what is negotiated and, and everything? I mean, is that something we can work towards or would that be beneficial? Good evening, President Reese and members of the board, Mr. Glover. Um, from a personal perspective, yes, I certainly think having classified could benefit in the larger picture. But as administration, I don't get to decide who they choose to be their members or not. Um, so that's something that, uh, or who they get to pick to be on the Moon Confer team. Um, the Higley Education Association makes those determinations. I do know from conversations, because I do meet with the Higley Education Association leadership on a monthly basis, they are looking to expand and try to recruit um, members um, and expand into that arena. I don't know how successful they've been thus far. Um, I do know they've got increased in participation of membership um, since the spring of 2018. Um, but again, that's something that they have to decide. And as administration, it's actually um, could be considered an unfair labor practice if I were to get involved in that. OK, thank you. I'll talk to uh, HEA. <laughs> Thanks. Any other comments or questions? Do we know if these are the same people that were on the committee last year? I'm sorry, I think my mic's echoing a little. Not a problem. No, um, they actually do have new members on the HEA side and um, our side also. One, because of other commitments as well as vacancies, um, you know, the transition of Miss Nancy Diab who went to Green Creek. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Glover, did I hear? Okay, sorry. Then that motion carries 5-0. All right, we are going to go on to 8.3 um, 8 for, um, I move that we, sorry, my, I'm sorry, we're at 8.4, wait. I have two different, Hold on, I apologize. Okay, I'm with you. <laughs> um, I move that we approve to ratify um, the updated 2019-2020 certified performance pay plan. I believe we have information on this particular item. Is that correct? Uh, some type of review? Uh, President Reese, members of the board, this does go through the meet and confer process. Um, Mrs. Martins, do we have any changes to the pay performance plan this year? 
So, oh, pardon me. Um, in regards to the document itself, uh, I think it's in the draft form. You can see where the changes did occur. The meet and confer team in the 2018-2019 school year worked on this document to clarify practices um, that was happening across the district in relation to this and uh, made sure that we took our time to do a due diligence in understanding this document and for their scope. Because of the fact is what you just said, Ms. Wilson, earlier, we've had transition over the last few years. So we wanted to make sure that we all understood those components. It's not noted in that document above, um, but on the first page, minor changes, uh, it does read 2019-2020 school year. And then um, on that first page, the subject title, school-wide performance, has been changed to read district-wide performance. And then as you move into the third page of the document, there was a paragraph that was added in relation to exceptions. And that was due to some feedback that we had received from HEA and their constituencies in relation to the fact that we had individuals who, um, not beyond their own control, had to leave the district and break contract. And under past practice with this document and its existence prior, um, if an individual broke contract, they weren't allowed to have an appeal process and they were not eligible. So we made these exceptions based on the same exceptions that we have when employees ask to waive their contract release fees or their penalty fees. Um, and that's typically due to medical illness of themselves or an individual they have to care for, um, military orders or a spouse that moves out of state for their employment. Um, so we added that language that exceptions will be made based on the discretion of the Executive Director of Human Resources based on those areas. The paragraph underneath that, under days of service, um, there had been past practice in regards to the understanding of this statement that if an individual was hired um, after the start of the school year, so they received a 186-day contract, and for various reasons, they were starting, let's say, in August, September, October, et cetera, that paragraph applied to them to where they were still eligible for the money, but it was prorated prorated based on their time with the district in which they had not broken contract. Um, so we had discussion around that and then added a, that insert where it says, is hired after the start date of the school year, comma, but to provide clarification in that area. And then the last section um, of that page that goes into the other page is that we added information um, in regards to, in addition to just FMLA, Family Medical Leave Act, if an employee did not qualify for FMLA um, and they were going on a leave of absence, that would still make them eligible for this pay as long as they were the same eligibility requirements related to FMLA. So, In our perspective, um, and like I said, we do consensus um, in the meet confer because we use the interest-based bargaining process. Um, we felt that adding these languages and clarifying it uh, helped bring um, better equity to our employees um, and incentivization for our certified members a little bit better, for lack of a better word. Perfect, thank you. Does anyone have any questions, comments, Mr. Glover? <laughs> of course. Yeah, um, th thank you for that, and um, I, I support those changes. I, uh, I actually had a few others, if it were me, that, uh, to make it even stronger, but um, my question isn't that. It's more, um, I think this is an important document. I think these are good changes that are beneficial to our employees. Um, so I assume the HEA will get this out to teachers, but do we, is this something that you would send out to staff or, uh, any, go ahead, you look like you have an answer. Uh, President Reese, members of the board, after this is approved by the board, then it would be sent out to our certified staff that is eligible for, for this uh, pay for performance and these, the benefits outlined in this document. Okay, thank you, Dr. Thomas and Ms. Martins. It's always, you gotta know the rules of the game if you're gonna play. Any other questions or comments? All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 That motion carries 5-0. All right, we will go on to 8.4. I move that we approve the payment for ro road work adjacent to the district property for future school site performed during the 2018-2019 fiscal year. Second. Any questions or comments regarding this payment? President Reese. Dr. Thomason. 
Yes, President Reese, this was approved um, earlier by the governing board. The, the reason why it's back on the, the docket tonight is because we did not get a bill from the company until after the new fiscal year. And so uh, the board previously approved this in the 18-19 school year. And because we did not get a bill till the 1920 school year, it's back on again for reapproval. Perfect. Thank you. Any other questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. We'll go on to 8.5. And I move that we approve the payment for the Summer Kids Club field trips to Makudu's Island during the 2018-2019 fiscal year. Second. This falls under the same um, reason it's coming to us is that it was field trips that occurred last fiscal year. We didn't receive the bill until this fiscal year, so it needs our approval. Any questions? All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, that motion carries 5-0. So we will move on to our future agenda items. We have a list of our future agenda items regarding the curriculum and instruction. Um, we do have information coming up on field trip procedures as an update, uh, also in September, and then we have some dual enrollment in AP, and then we get into some further um, updates that we have on our future agenda list. Any other items? Mrs. Wilson. Um, if we could add to the December 4th uh, PD, when they talk about the late start, if we could add a couple early, or uh, the, what the elementaries are doing, a few slides on that. Okay, I'm like, do you, like, <laughs> can we have some slides just about PD for uh, elementaries, what they're doing with their, if we could just add those in? Because I figured it doesn't need a full presentation but maybe just a few slides on that. Thank you, sorry. Sorry to disrupt your conversations. <laughs> <laughs> no snorting over there. <laughs> Any other future agenda items? President Reese. Mrs. Kaler. I um, am going to bring up something that I am very passionate about right now because again, it was a very big talk at our ASBA law conference, and that is the words, don't kill me, Mrs. Corey, restorative justice. And I would love to have some type of um, work study on how does that look in, a, in our schools? How, does, how would that be implemented? What are costs? What are, um, what's the buy-in for our staff? What is, what is what does restorative mean in a school and how does that look when it is actually carried out in in today's world with our kids um i know jim walsh spoke about it a couple years ago and then there was a great asba conference again this year and i just want to kind of dive into it more as a district and see if this is something that um, I don't know, this isn't, I can't talk to everybody <laughs> about what their thoughts are on the subject, so I would love a work study where we can hash it out. Thank you. Um, so if I understand correctly, because restorative justice, I know we've been talking about it for the last six years, and so if I understand correctly, what you're asking for is during a work study, you want to know what the cost would be to implement it what, are, what it would look like, how that process would go, what an implementation process would look like, and... I think it would be good to have, um, you know, like, not to compare other schools, but find other school districts our size and find out how they implemented it, what it did for their schools, did it cut down on, um, you know, future infractions of the students, just okay. some data, I guess, is what I'm looking for to if it's okay. really restorative at the end of the day. So. so Dr. Thomason, can we look at, I know we have a pretty packed um, future agenda items, but could we look at that come January, February? Because if that is something that the board is interested in 
um, moving forward with and implementing, I, we could look at where we would need to be to implement that for the next school year if the board chooses to do so. Absolutely, I think a work study on the process of the definitions and what restorative justice entails would be the first place to start and then take a look at that time on costs for implementing the um, quote unquote restorative justice program because there are other programs that do a lot of the same things but restorative justice is, is kind of like um, Kleenex for lack of a better word or a jacuzzi. So it's looking at the exact programs that we want to take a look at and see the definition, see if that's what we want to do to see what the cost would be and to see if we want to move forward with that. Okay, so if we can look at the January, February timeframe um, for that work study, so then we would have time if the board chose to move forward at that time. Thank you. Any other items? Wow, okay. <laughs> I move that we adjourn. Second. All right. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Is that a record short Have meeting? a good evening. It isn't. I, we were pretty close last time. <laughs>